Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. So first of all, a very, very happy new year to you. I'm wishing all of you a fabulous 2023 and may it be a year where you are all safe, healthy, happy and successful. All right. I really wishing you all the best from the bottom of my heart. And I hope you've all had lovely festivities. I hope you're still enjoying some festivities and perhaps are still on holiday for some of you. And uh, yes, I hope it's just been a pleasant time all around. In the upcoming week, you're going to find that there is a, uh, a tarot card reading, which is a general tarot card reading for 2023, uh, which will be uploaded, I think, tomorrow, the day after. So look out for that. And then there's also one uh, concerning love. And there's one for the finances and career. So look out for that during this week. And I hope that you will find all of that interesting and exciting and give you some kind of guidance as to what to expect in the year ahead. All right. So today I have two decks of cards with me and I have three options. And this is for January 2023. So what I wanted to do for January 2023, um, the Oracle card guidance, I wanted to do one which was just general. And I wanted to do one which was for love. And so I've chosen the Rumi Oracle by Alana Fairchild for the love. And I've chosen the Madame Medora Fortune cards for the general Oracle card guidance for January 2023. And the three options are a chestnut, which is the option number one. This is just a clear quartz right here. And I've chosen this little pig. And the reason for that is because I am in Germany and uh, this pig signifies good luck um, in, in, at New Year. And uh, quite a lot of people here um, who follow this tradition would give their loved ones a little pig made of marzipan uh, at, the, at the New Year. And so um, the, since I'm not able to give all of you some marzipan, I wanted to just bring the, the pig into the, the reading. And if you feel comfortable and if you're drawn to it, if you resonate with it, go ahead and, and choose the, the pig as the third option. So let's begin. So for those of you who've chosen the option number one, which is the chestnut, we are asking what is our Oracle card guidance for January 2023? And for general, our general Oracle card guidance, we're using the Madame and Dora fortune cards. And for the love aspect of it, we are going to use the Rumi Oracle. All right, so let's get into it. What do my viewers who've chosen the option number one need to know for January 2023? What can they expect? What do they need to know? And the card which has been drawn is the unicorn and it signals good fortune and friendship. So I think that January 2023 is going to be quite a light month for you. It's going to be a month where there are a whole lot of new possibilities and there's a whole lot that awaits you in this year. And January is going to signal that for you. Now, having said that, I feel that for those of you who have chosen this option, there may be some difficulties along the year, which might be quite, um, quite sad for you. However, on the whole, 2023, um, and especially January, it's going to be a fairly good year for you and you can look forward to being provided with a lot of opportunities to be able to make something out of it and it's up to you to choose whether you do something with it or not right um, and so let's see what's in store for you as far as love is concerned so we're asking for those of you who've chosen this chestnut the options number one what is the love guidance? So what is the information that you need to hear today? A 
Okay, so the card that's come up as far as love is concerned is called Divine Discontent. And it has the number 12. And what I'm feeling here is that as far as love is concerned, there is a, um, a kind of feeling that you're not ready to be at the space that you need to be at with your loved one whether you are already with a loved one or whether you're still waiting to be with a loved one. Uh, regardless of the situation that you're in, there is some degree of healing and recovery that still needs to take place. And I feel that with this card, this divine discontent, what it is, what it's telling you about is that at some place in you, you have some discontent with yourself. You have a sense of needing to heal something or you're still hurting from something you're still in pain over something that's happened and so this month of January is going to be a month where that is probably brought to the fore or maybe it's already come to the fore for you in the last few days or the last week and you'll need to address that now this could concern something to do with a previous lover or um, one of your earlier relationships that you had um, maybe perhaps your first love. Um, this is something, it feels like it has something to do with um, vulnerability and with naivety. So almost as if um, you were you were fairly young or and so, there was some kind of taking advantage or some kind of not knowing what you were getting yourself into. All right. So there's a sense here that um, there, there's a discontent that you have with yourself on some level perhaps you have not forgiven yourself or you're not forgiven the other person you've not been able to move on and this is what is standing in the way or hindering you from actually achieving greater heights with your loved one or finding your loved one if you haven't if you haven't found your loved one as yet so i would say that when you find this card in your relationship in your in your reading in your relationship reading what you need to do is uh, take a moment and, and journal and um, look at previous relationships. Journal about them. Journal about what you think about them. Or if you don't like to write, you know, just perhaps do a video journal. Or however, if you draw through journaling uh, for as a means of journaling, do whatever suits you. But what you need to do is look back at the relationships that you were in and the mark that it left with you. What do you take with you from the relationships that you've been with? And for some of you who are, who, who this may not necessarily refer to your first love relationship. This could refer to your relationship with your mom and dad who has ultimately define the type of relationship that you will have with your loved one. And there may be some some kind of work that needs to be done here. And I think that if you don't know what it is and this is news to you, I think the best way to do it is just to look back at your relationships that you've had, your significant relationships that you've had, love love relationships and and not love relationships, and see what you take from it, what you hold in you, what you carry with you um, now. And look at look there and see if there's anything that needs to be resolved or needs to be worked through. Perhaps it's just a thought. Perhaps it's just something that you need to reconsider at this stage of your life because now you have the wisdom to be able to work with it and manage it. And uh, and so you can you know perhaps easily let go of it. It doesn't have to be a huge huge thing. But this card has come up to just tell you that that is what is in the background of what why. Um, why you're here today to to hear me say this to you, but also why you need to what you need to do in order to progress in love, and how it is that you can uh, reach a, a new level in terms of love, in terms of your love life. Okay, and then just going back here to your general um the the general aspect of it, I feel like the unicorn, the good fortune um, and friendship card is a card that just shows that you're being showered in abundance and showered in blessings. You are just so loved and so blessed right now and you are in accordance with your divine calling. And I think that um, in order for, to be able to receive such blessings, you you have to be 
in tune with the divine order. When I talk about being in tune with the divine order, I'm talking about being vibrating at the level of love. Okay. And so this is something that it feels like you are ready to receive, ready to accept and ready to just be open on so many levels here. And there's something really beautiful looking, um, looking, uh, coming in, in, in your life in, in January. And that could be in, in terms of fortune, it could be in terms of friendships, new friendships, but it could also be just in terms of feeling more secure in yourself and feeling more comfortable in your life and just having a greater sense of security uh, with yourself and with your, with your being. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. And once again, I wish you a really fabulous January. Please look out for the readings for 2023, which are going to be uploaded in the course of the week. Okay, lots and lots of love to you and many, many blessings. So my dear ones, for those of you who've chosen the option number two, which is this clear quartz here, we're asking two questions today. We're asking, what do we have in store for us for uh, in general for January 2023? And what do we have in store for us in terms of love for 2023? Now, this is not necessarily um, a predictive reading, but more um, a guidance. OK, so what can you what are you being advised uh, about in January 2023? So let's get started. Okay, so for those of you who've chosen this second option here, uh, the first card that comes out in terms of what can we expect for January and what is the guidance for January, what is your Oracle card guidance, is the hourglass. And the caption reads here that time is of the essence. And so I feel that you're, you're going to be needing to um, complete certain things that you might have begun that you haven't been able to finish. Uh, you need to be able to uh, get all your ducks in a row because perhaps February um, is going to be something that's going or the end of January is going to bring something bigger for you and you need to prepare for that. Um, you need to take care of a lot of administrative matters or deal with a lot of um, things that require preparation, that require um, bureaucratic um, um, kind of interaction. And so you'll need to do this and, and be on your on the ball about it. You need to be on your toes about it. Um, and so I feel that here there's also a chance to be able to use the, the goodness and the good energy and the, the vibrance that you're going to experience in January to be able to um, to push you and to motivate you to be able to finish certain things, to be able to um, complete certain things. Or perhaps you haven't, it's not about completing anything, but it's something that you've been putting off for a long, long time. You, you haven't even begun doing it and it's time to actually do it. And um, there's this real urgency about that. There's this real urgency that now is the time to do it. And so if you have felt that you've been in a bit of a rut, perhaps over, you know, the last few years with, with the, with the uh, health uh, situation that we've had and um, with the, with all the very fast changes that we've had in this world, um, this month of January is going to be a year where things feel like they're taking off again, where they feel like it's time to get started and where it's time to get things done, where it's time to get things on the road. It's a great time to begin something. And I feel the types of things that you will be beginning are the things that you've been um, procrastinating about or perhaps you've thought about, but you haven't enforced and or or just things that you've been meaning to do for yourself for a long time. And um, I feel that like there are some of you who may begin something now, um, something new, brand new as well. But I feel like uh, the beginnings of things that are new are not going to be implemented in January. It's going to be thought through in January and perhaps be implemented in February or March or later on. And um, this is definitely a time in which I think you could uh, sow the seeds for what's going to happen later. And it will be a very good time for that. But I don't think that new 
new things are going to begin that you haven't thought about previously. If you've only just had the inspiration to do something, it's most likely going to come into effect later on in February or March or, or a bit later even. Um, but yes, but getting things in order. Okay, so I feel the message that I'm getting here is that it's important for you, even though you haven't, you can't see what's going to happen uh, around the corner in February, um, to just be ready for everything that could happen. So, you know, get your home cleaned, get your cupboards sorted, get your files uh, in order, do your admin, do your filing, etc. Get your projects up to date, do your research. Um prepare for the eventualities and also uh, just p uh, purchase what you need at this point. Uh, so it was also a message that I'm getting and I know it's Mercury retrograde so people might be thinking oh you know why would I want to purchase anything now but I feel like if you don't uh, you won't have the chance to do so in February because it looks like February is going to be quite um, for some of you I feel like February is, is like taking off and 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 just kind of going somewhere or perhaps just taking off and uh, being very, very busy, but there's not much time to pay attention to things. So January is almost like a good time to prepare and get things started and get things ready so that you are really going to be ready, uh, set and go for, for February. All right. So I think I've spent a bit too much of time on that one, but let me just get into the love aspect of this. So let's just see what do you need to know in terms of love for January 2023? So the card we have here is the number 14 and it reads let love transform so I think this is a very positive card it means that things are moving it means that things are moving at a steady pace and that it just needs to be allowed to take its course okay so if you are um, in a love situation where you overthinking things perhaps or you're a bit worried it's time to kind of let go of those things. Let, you know, the, the saying, let go and let God. Let go of whatever is uh, on your mind and just let things kind of take their course and see what happens. I feel like now is not the time for you to take action as far as love is concerned. I think it's largely a time for action to be taken around you. So, and, and that that impacts you um, and you need to have that, you need to allow that to happen. Yeah, so the, the time is of the essence thing just applies to other areas in your life. It doesn't apply to your love life. Okay, so just bear that in mind uh, and don't read that into this because that's the message I've gotten. Just don't, it doesn't apply, okay? So it applies to your 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 hobbies, your work, your career, your travel, your, uh, your bills that need to be paid, perhaps fines that need to be paid um uh taxes um it, it refers to that kind of thing uh it also refers to home stuff like getting things done at home and being ready it's almost as if something's going to happen um that's going to need you to be ready anyway so that's that that okay so the love stuff once again is about um about just allowing things things are going to go through some changes and there's going to be some some kind of ups and some kind of downs that doesn't necessarily mean they'll be good or bad okay it doesn't when I talk about ups and downs I'm not necessarily talking about uh you know um a roller coaster of being happy and then being sad I'm not talking about that I'm talking about just the changes that gracefully happen when you just let things be and you're gonna find that some things come up that is going to be um quite uh interesting to you or rather it's going to be um, something that you need to take note of in terms of love. And then it feels to me that once you've done that or once that's happened, um, you have a better view of things. You have a better view of where things are headed to and what the the long term aspect of this is going to look like or where it's headed to and what what can you expect in the near future. So I feel that um, 
in love. It is a time where there's going to be quite a lot of things happening and where you are going to be needing to stand back and observe what is happening and not push too hard or not try to make things happen. It's not, you don't have to do that. It's not you that needs to do that at this time. It, th that's the advice. It's like, let it happen, let it happen. And perhaps at a later stage, you will need to take action uh, and you would need to, tr to impact the transformation. But right now, there are things that you will miss um, if you don't just quieten down on, and just observe what's going on. And so um, that, that makes a lot of sense if you are in a relationship with someone. But if you're not in a relationship with someone, uh, then I feel this applies in the sense that you don't need to think about it so much. You don't need to uh, manifest so hard or you don't need to visualize so much. You can let that be for the moment and just let it let it take its own course. Things are about to happen. Things are about to get started and move in a particular direction. And I feel like um, in order for you to allow it to transform, there are certain things that you need to know about yourself as well, as, a, as, as well as about um, somebody else. There's somebody, if there is somebody that you've been interested in, like for some of you who are interested in somebody that you haven't even met, and you've been watching them, you're going to find that uh, you actually, you're going to just observe what they do in the next couple of months, especially this month and next month until about March, I think. And then you're going to have an idea, a better idea of whether this is the person that you are interested in uh, or you want to be with or whether, you know, you have some more information about this person. This is not necessarily negative information. It's just, um, I don't see you disappointed or something but I am reading for a whole lot of people here so perhaps that's not an emotion that comes up very strongly for all of you but what I do see is that you're going to be quite interested to see what actually comes up and it is also going to be when when this card talks about letting love transform but I feel like you are also transforming in this time and as you transform and as you find yourself in February and March you're going to find that you are a different person to the person that you entered this year um, uh, as. And you are going to find that you, you um, want different things or you expect different things. You want different things and you have um, um, perhaps a clearer idea of what it is that you want as well. All right. So I'm wishing you all a very, very blessed uh, 2023 once again. And uh, look out for the videos that I'm going to upload this week for uh, which are general reading for 2023 and a love reading for 2023 and a finance and career reading for 2023. It'll all be uploaded within the course of the next seven days. All right. Lots and lots of love to you and um, all the best. Blessings abound from Kismet Rising. All right, and for those of you who've chosen the third option, I have this little pig here. And for those of you who've missed the intro, um, the pig um, is a symbol of good luck in Germany, where I am right now. And uh, and so I wanted to bring it into the reading uh, because it's a time um, at the beginning of the year, especially on New Year's Day, it's a time when uh, people give these marzipan um, little pigs um to two people as a symbol of good luck okay um so i wanted to to share that with you in some way and so i brought it as one of the symbols into the reading and if for those of you who have chosen option number three what we have here is a deck for the general um reading and we have a deck for the love reading so i'm just gonna begin so what can you expect what is your guidance for 2023 for january 2023 let's be clear <laughs> What can those of you who've chosen the option number three, this little piggy, expect and hope to know for January 2023? And I'm going to go with this one. Wow, it's the oracle. <laughs> okay, so it says, seek wisdom and guidance from elders. That's really interesting so that's really interesting and the reason I think it's really interesting is because there's a lot of that that's come up for people that I've read for over the last six weeks um or six to eight weeks I should say and you know there's 
that has been a really interesting um interesting thing to come up so i would say that when you see this card it's time to go home and seek your own oracle it's time to um look inward go to your ancestors go to your your parents go to your traditions your culture and your traditions and use that form of divination to be able to hear what it is that you need to gain from your elders and what it is that you need to gain from your ancestors in many situations there is a um a calling from uh, from ancestors and i find this uh, very much when i work with um in africa with african clients there's always a calling for, from the ancestors i find this also when i work with some clients in in the indian subcontinent and um i've also found it when i've worked with um um with clients from from the chinese um background so i think that um um ethnically that is so um i think that in this card is a card calling you back to your ancestors it's saying to you hear what we have to say hear what is coming your way there is need to understand more about the situation and there's a need to hear more before you continue so this is not where it ends this reading is not where it ends and it's not necessarily going to be from other videos on youtube um but rather going inward and accessing your own form of divination look at your culture and your traditions and see where you come from and look at what form of divination they used and then perhaps seek out a reading like that uh if you can't from your own um community or your own family there's a feeling here of needing to learn something or needing to understand something and the card says itself seek wisdom and guidance and there's a need to be able to approach something from a different angle to be able to understand a certain wisdom a certain background of something to be able to understand the karmic definition of what is actually happening in your life right now so it might be that you are also allow yourself to go into a guided meditation or some kind of meditation where you talk to your ancestors and you ask them what is it that i need to know that is also a way to do it in fact uh that is a way that i like to do it personally and and that is uh how i um very often offer it to clients as well uh, in a guided um meditation so i think that here there is a sense really to be able to understand what it is that's um needing to be told to you but also just understanding that there's a this is a time for pause and to be able to hear to hear what needs to be what's what's being said to to understand better uh what is going on one could just dismiss that quite frivolously and and think oh well i don't need to know that i need to know about other things but this card is very it's very stubborn in that it says well just pause just listen just hear just wait there's something that needs to be said and you need to be patient in order to hear what's being said so that you can make the right uh decisions or take the right steps rather uh as you go ahead so if you are somebody who's um about to take some big plan make some big plans or change something in your life or um if you're asking you know if you if you're feeling quite eager quite um hasty you just want to get it done you're feeling quite impatient rather then i think that this card here uh, is just saying to you just take a pause just calm yourself down just try to do whatever it need you need to do to just calm down and just sit and listen and hear and i said and i said you know you could use meditation to be able to connect to your ancestors you could just go and talk to your family um perhaps your parents or members of your extended family um or you could access your community and use their form of divination um or you could in fact uh research their form of divination and ask your questions and then consult someone to be able to do a reading for you i feel like the message that needs to come to you is going to come to you from your a uh, form of divination that's already familiar to you that perhaps you were raised with or you had some inkling about when you were younger you know for some of you it's just about going to um, a form a place of worship and and just kneeling and praying and hearing what needs to be said and i feel that um yeah for some of you 
um, that's going to be the most appropriate thing to do. And so um, let's move on now to the love aspect of this. And so the question we're asking is, what do those of you who've chosen the pig here, the option number three, three need, need to know about love in January 2023? We have the card number 11. And we have a sacred convergence. Okay. So I think this is a very beautiful card to have. And I feel that uh, as far as love is concerned, you are going to be connecting with you, the person you love, with your um, with your loved one in on a soul level. It's like it's like you are able to speak to each other uh, spiritually uh, or energetically. I don't want to say telepathically because that's something else, but it's as if two souls are merging and uh, experiencing a certain realization or a certain ex uh, energetic frequency and you are both enlightened by that and that contributes to your relationship. So for those of you who are in a relationship, you are with someone, uh, whether you are living with them or whether you are just dating them or whether you're in a long distance relationship with them, there is something that's going to happen in January that's going to help you become closer to each other um, because of this sacred convergence. But hang on a second, I just said closer to each other. And then I heard that um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it'll bring you closer to each other. What's going to happen is there will be a sacred convergence that will be coming together for, uh, spiritually, but this can sometimes scare someone. And so you may find a little bit of upheaval in, in at this time. Some of you will, not every one of you. Those of you who have partners who may be um, jolted or feel jolted or feel a bit jarred by this uh, spiritual experience. I feel that uh, this doesn't necessarily have, have to happen on an energetic level. It could just be that the both of you go to um, um, a place of worship once again, to a mass, for instance, uh, or to a prayer, uh, to some kind of space where you can connect and share your experience of spirituality, where you can share something that you feel for the God, for the universe. Um, just um, you share a, a love frequency that's beyond this world that's beyond the experience that you have with this person just naturally and physically and emotionally and it's a spiritual experience and this is a blessing you know it's a very beautiful blessing it's also a moment in your life where you come together and you take a step forward together and you receive the blessings of the of the universe basically for those of you who are single and you've received this card, I feel that you aren't far away from meeting the person who you will be with or you are seeking. Okay, so um, there is a sense here that on some level, unbeknownst to you, oh, well, now you know, <laughs> it's like it happens in a, in a way, in a way that's somehow unconscious or subconscious. It happens on a different realm. And so you you are meeting this person or you're converging with this person on a different realm, on a love frequency. And so there's this kind of recognition of one another. There's this knowing of one another and the sense that you can almost reach out to each other. And I think that once, you know, once I see a card like this coming up in somebody's reading, I know that it's not a long time before they will meet the person that they could have a relationship with. You know, we all have free will. We all can decide what we choose and what we don't, what we, you know, you could have a sacred convergence with someone on a spiritual level and then meet that person and they a foot shorter than you and you decide for that reason that you don't necessarily want to be with that person. So that is something. For those of you who are single and not looking and you have this a sacred convergence, I feel that this could be with someone who's passed on. It could be with someone who you've loved, uh, who is in another um, entanglement or relationship or some kind of not entanglement is not the right word, but they are occupied. 
let's say, and you could still, you, it's possible that you're having a sacred convergence with this person. And it's almost like, a, it's just a recognition. It's a, I see you and I recognize you and I'm there for you karmically and spiritually. It's a month for that. So I feel that regardless of your status, of your relationship status, that this is a month where being more conscious about how you feel and what you are experiencing in love is going to be interesting for you. And I feel that you, what you could do if you want to ex access some of that energy or you want to experience that more uh, acutely um, is that you could, you could meditate on that. You could meet that person and you can uh, meet that person on a spiritual realm and, and just observe what's happening uh, or try to at least. Yeah, I think I have a, a meditation that's on my channel which could facilitate something like this. And if I do, I'm going to put a link to it here. All right, so I think that's um, that's about it. Um, I feel that this is going to be a very sacred month for you, actually, a very spiritual and sacred month for you. And it's going to be one where there's going to be quite a lot happening on that level. And that it's... Um, a very it's almost like you're digging the foundation for 2023 because what happens in this month is going to be laying the foundations for what will happen in the months that follow all right so anyway i wish you all a very blessed uh time ahead and uh all all the best once again for 2023 and blessings abound from kismet rising